Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today, we will finish our discussion on variance analysis. So ang hindi na lang po natin na discuss regarding direct material and direct labor variances would be your mix and yield variance. So after this topic, we will proceed to your overhead variances. Always remember that mix and yield variances are the sub variances for direct material quantity variance and direct labor efficiency variance. I'll repeat, these are the sub variances of direct material quantity variance as well as direct labor efficiency variance. So in other words, pag pinagsama mo dapat ang mix sa ka yield variance, ang total dapat niyan is direct material quantity variance kung direct material siya and then direct labor efficiency variance kung direct labor siya. Kaya nga kung papansinin mo, meron tayong template for mix and yield variance. Ah, kaya nandiyan yung AQ times AP, AQ times SP, okay, SQ times SP. Kung titignan mo, ito yung 3-layer template natin for direct material variance. Na kung naalala mo last time, yung difference ng first sa kanong second line would be the direct material price and then yung second sa third line would be your direct material quantity variance. So ibig sabihin, kung ang goal natin ay paghiwalayin ang direct material quantity variance into mix and yield variance, ang gawin natin, maglagay tayo ng panggitna. 'Di ba sabi ko nga sa inyo sa sa variance analysis palaging ganyan ang concept. Kung gusto mo kung gusto mong paghiwalayin ang variance, maglalagay ka ng panggitna. Katulad nung nakaraan, 'di ba? Yung AQ times X, AP actual cost 'yon. Yung SQ times SP standard cost. So pag pinag pag kinuha mo yung difference ng dalawa, that is your total variance for direct materials. Pero ang ginawa natin dahil ina-apply natin ang management by exception, pinaghihiwalay natin into direct material price sa direct material quantity at ginawa natin yon nung naglagay tayo ng panggitna at yung panggitna natin AQ times SP ganun din dito sa mix and yield kung ang mix and yield variance ay sub variance ng direct material quantity then much better para makuha natin sila maglagay tayo ng panggitna which is AQ times WASP sir ano po yung WASP that is your weighted average standard price Take note and as a warning, ang mix and yield variance computation is more of procedural. Kung baga, may proseso kung paano ito kinocompute. Kung gusto mong masterin ang mix and yield variance, kailangan natin matutunan yung proseso kung paano siya kinocompute. Okay? And uh, again, the difference of the first and second line is your direct material price variance. And the difference of your second and third line is the direct material mix variance and the difference between the third and fourth line is your direct material yield variance kaya pag pinagsama ang mix sa ka yield variance that is your direct material quantity variance again ang ginawa lang natin ay pinag pinaghiwalay lang natin ang quantity variance into mix and yield as an application of management by exception we are investigating more what is the reason why there is a change or difference in actual and standard quantity so dalawa pa lang dahilan noon pwedeng iba yung mix yung standard mix sa actual mix at pwedeng iba ang standard yield sa actual yield Take note, yield variance is an output variance. Pag sinabi kasi nating yield output ang iang synonymous niyan eh. So ibig sabihin kaya nagkaroon ng difference in quantity kasi yung pinaplano mong i-produce iba sa actual na na-produce mo. Okay, that's the reason kung bakit mayroong direct material yield variance. And always remember to compute your WASP, your weighted average standard price. Ang formula natin ay total standard cost divided by total standard quantity. So I think hindi natin siya maiintindihan by just explaining the template. We will appreciate more the template if we will apply it to our actual sample exercise. But before we answer it, hindi ko na i-discuss yung yung mix and yield variance for direct labor kasi kung titinan mo sabi ko nga last time ang direct material template saka direct labor template pareho lang so ibig sabihin ang gagawin mo lang dyan yung mga Q saka P papalitan mo ng R's saka yung P gagawin mong rate uh, so definitely pareho din ang proseso kung paano siya kinocompute 
Kaya sa problem solving natin later o ang ginamit ko na ding sample exercise is for direct materials. Pero again, kung paano natin kinocompute yung mix and yield sa materials, ganun din ang computation sa mix and yield ng labor. Okay, so sige, let us apply this one. And by the way, yung last item pala, yung SQ times SP, pwede mo siyang compute in one by one pero much better kung gamitan natin siya ng formula para mas mapabilis ang ating computation. At ang formula natin for the last item would be total standard cost divided by standard yield times actual yield. Okay, bakit sir act times actual yield? Because actual yield is your actual production. Remember last time, SQ is an amount after you multiply actual co actual production to your standard quantity per unit. Kaya yung actual yield nandyan, kasi syempre, that is synonymous to actual production. Okay, so let us read the exercise. Granger Corporation makes papayat, a nutritional drink. For a 20 kilo batch, standard material costs are as follows. So kung titignan natin, unlike on our previous exercise, na isang uri lang ng materyales ang ginagamit natin for our finished good, expect na sa mix and yield variance maraming materyales ang ginagamit to create a finished good such as on our problem sa problem natin ang kanyang finished good papayat so kumbaga papayat is a nutritional drink pampapayat siguro at ang ingredient o ang raw materials na ginagamit niya number 1 carrot juice then cucumber juice at ang pinakamalupit mur muriatic acid no, nakatakot yun Anyways, so definitely yung nakikita mong data for carrot, cucumber, and muriatic acid would be their standard material cost. So yung quantity na nakikita mo, that is your standard quantity, while yung unit price na nakikita mo, standard price. Kaya nga pag pinagmultiply mo yan, yung standard quantity sa standard price, yung nakikita mong 600, 500, saka 300, that is your total standard material cost. Okay, next. During the month of May, the following materials were used in producing 450 batches of papaya. So, ibig sabihin ito, nakikita mong data for carrot juice, cucumber juice, and muriatic acid are all actual information or actual data. So, ang requirement, calculate the materials price, materials mix, and materials yield variances. Okay, so sige, let us start. So before we answer it, screenshot muna muna para di natin binabalikan later on in solving it. So again, ang template natin would be apat na layers. Kung naalala mo, ang unang layer natin is actual quantity times actual price. Kung naalala mo last time, sa typical na direct material price variance computation, napaka-simpleng computein lang ng AQ times AP. But for mix and yield variances, take note, since marami tayong materialist na ginagamit for one finished good, ang computation ng AQ times AP ay kanya-kanya. So, pwede mo ilagay sa note mo, AQ times AP kanya-kanya. Paano kanya-kanya, sir? Kung titignan natin, ang actual quantity natin based on the exercise, tatlo. Ang actual quantity natin for carrot juice is 7,800 kilos. Ang actual quantity natin kay cucumber juice, 4,600 kilos. At ang actual quantity natin for muriatic acid is 7,600 kilos. So, AQ times AP means kanya-kanya mong imumultiply yung actual quantity sa ka-actual price ni carrot juice, cucumber juice, sa muriatic acid. So, kung titinan natin, that is 7,800 times 38, then 4,600 times 55, then 7,600 times 23. Kapag na-multiply mo na yung tatlong yun, saka mo siya ia-add. At kapag na-add mo na yun, AQ times AP is 724,200 So I'll repeat Ang computation ng AQ times AP Kanya-kanya Per type of direct material Ganon din yung susunod natin gagawin o, Ito yung computation niya So I think sinabi ko naman na kanina yan 
yung AQ times SP computation natin, this is per type of direct material also. In other words, kanya-kanya ulit. So, ibig sabihin, yung AQ ng carrot juice, imumultiply mo sa kanyang standard price. Yung AQ ng cucumber juice, imumultiply mo sa kanyang standard price din. Yung AQ ng muriatic acid, imumultiply mo sa kanyang standard price din. So, ang computation niyan would be 7,800 the actual quantity ng carrot juice times yung standard price na 40. Then for cucumber juice, that is 4.6 times 50. Then 7,600 times 20. For a total of 694,000. Kaya nga sabi ko nga kanina, as a warning, ang mix and yield variance computation is procedural. You need to master the procedure. You have no choice. Okay, next. Pangatlong layer na tayo. So definitely, bago tayo mag-proceed sa ikatlong layer, computein na rin natin yung direct material price variance and that is 30,200 unfavorable. Bakit unfavorable? Kasi mas malaki yung amount nung nasa taas kaysa yung nasa baba. Okay, the next item would be actual quantity times WASP. WASP would be your weighted average standard price. Unlike yung first saka second line item na sabi ko nga kanina, kanya-kanya yung computation, yung pangatlong item or pangatlong line item, sama-sama na sila. Kung papansinin mo saan galing yung 20,000 na actual quantity, yan yung total actual quantity. Meaning, yan yung pinagsama-samang 7,800, 4,600, saka 7,600. Diba yung tatlong yon yun yung actual quantity ng bawat materyales na ginagamit mo para makabuo ng papayat. I'll repeat, yung pangatlong line item, sama-sama na silang tatlo. So, pag pinag-add mo yung tatlong actual quantity na yon ang total niyan is 20,000. Sir, bakit ganun? Bakit sa pangatlong layer, pinagsasama-sama na sila? Okay lang silang pagsamasamahin kasi yung amount na imumultiply mo is already a weighted average amount. Unlike on the first and the second line item, hindi siya weighted average. Talagang actual amount ang gagamitin mo. So, kanya-kanya talaga ang computation. So, again, saan nang galing yung 35 pesos na yan? Kung naalala mo kanina, di ba, to compute your weighted average standard price, that is total standard cost divided by total standard quantity. Sir, saan galing yung 1,4 saka yung 40? So, balik lang tayo dun sa ating ano ha? Sa ating exercise. So, ang computation ng WASP, di ba, is total standard cost. Ang standard cost natin per type of material ay 600 for carrot, 500 for cucumber, 300 for muriatic acid. So, pagsasama-samahin mo lang yung tatlong yun, that is your total standard cost. Ang total standard quantity, yung pinagsama-sama ring 15 kilos, 10 kilos, saka 15 kilos. So, that would be yung computation natin kanina na... 1,4 divided by 40. So, 20,000 times 35, that is 700,000. So, we can now compute your mix variance and our mix variance is 6,000 favorable. Kaya favorable kasi mas malaki yung nasa baba kaysa yung nasa taas. Okay. So, ang last item natin is SQ times SP. So, may alternative solution dyan na mahaba-haba kasi iisa-isahin mo yung computation. Pero, sa sabi ko nga kanina, binigyan na kita ng shortcut on how to compute the fourth line item. Di ba, ang shortcut natin is total standard cost divided by standard yield times actual yield. Wala ka ng problema sa total standard cost kasi na-compute na natin yan ng 1,400. Sir, saan galing yung divided by 1? Yung 1,400 kasi, sabi ng problem, that is good for 120 liter batch. Kung titignan natin, yung actual production natin is not good for 1 batch only. Sinabi ng problem, yung nakikita mong actual data, that is good for 450,000, oh sorry, 450 batches. Kung baga 450 ang actual production natin. Kaya, total standard cost divided by standard yield na 1 times actual yield na 450 that is 630,000 and that's the time that we can now compute your 
yield variance which is 70,000 unfavorable. So I hope na gets ninyo yung proseso on how to compute mix and yield variance. Wala tayong ibang choice, meron tayong template, yes, pero yung bawat line item doon sa template natin, procedural kung paano siya kinocompute. So wala kang ibang choice kung kundi masterin yung proseso on computing this type of variances. Okay, so this will conclude our discussion on mix and yield variance. Okay, at huwag na natin patagalin pa let us proceed to our last type of variance and that would be your overhead variances actually maraming mga estudyante ang nahihirapan sa standard costing because of overhead variances kasi alam mo naman lalo na sa mga nagre-review na mapapansin mo yung overhead variance may two-way, may three-way may four-way nas pag nakita mo sa libro may iba't ibang computation so ikaw naman sa, sa, ang thinking mo ang daming kailangang memoryahin ang daming kailangang tandaan so ang thinking mo para nag, nag information overload ka hanggang sa kinakain ka na ng, ng takot mo na baka hindi mo siya kayang intindihin pero I will do my best on how on how will you understand this topic pero ang pinakatatandaan mo lang sa overhead variances is that yung two way, three way at four way analysis are not independent formulas or not independent computations but actually yung lahat ng ways na yun are interrelated to one another so anong ibig sabihin sir nung interrelated to one another para kumbaga I will give you a story. Uh, kaya overhead variance kasi nagsimula sa one way yan. Ay, sir, walang one way na tinuro sa amin. Hindi na kasi madalas tinuturo ang one way analysis sa standard costing, pero mas malamang nadaanan mo to sa cost accounting mo. Yung tinatawag na over or under applied overhead. Yung over or under applied overhead that is known as the one way analysis kasi kung titingnan mo di ba ginamit mo yung actual cost driver kinumpere mo sa budgeted cost driver so kumbaga ang dating actual kinumpere mo sa standard no okay. so parang ganun yung dating ng one way analysis and syempre management is unsatisfied na ang basis lang natin ay one way kaya from one way nabuo yung two way analysis okay nabuo yung two-way analysis of overhead variances. So, kumbaga, kung papansinin mo, yung two-way, three-way, saka four-way na yan, lahat yan nabuo because of management by exception. Kasi, di ba, ang turo sa atin, we need to investigate variances as much as possible, as detailed as possible. Kaya, nabuo yung two-way, three-way, four-way. Kasi, mapapansin mo mamaya, hindi satisfied ang management with regards to the analysis of variances. Katulad sa two-way analysis. Ang two-way analysis, tinatawag ko siyang convo analysis. Bakit convo analysis? Kasi ang dalawang variance na nabubuo mo dito is your controllable variance and volume variance. So, convo. So, again, ang management, hindi satisfied. Kailangan pa natin mag-investigate further. Kaya mapapansin mo sa three-way analysis, yung controllable variance, hinati into two variants. Nandyan yung spending variance, saka efficiency variance. Pero, nandun pa rin yung volume variance. Kaya ang tawag ko sa three-way analysis ay SEV analysis. Bakit SEV? S is spending, E is efficiency, and V is volume. So, kung titignan mo, ewan ko lang kung napansin mo sa, o oh, busy ka sa pag-memorize ng formula, pero kung titignan mo, o oh, nga, no, tama si Sir, bakit ang volume variance nasa two-way sa three-way? Kasi ang pinaka-reason nun, yung dalawang way na yan, interrelated. Ang ginawa lang ng three-way, hinati yung controllable into spending and efficiency. So, ganun na naman. Ang management, unsatisfied na naman. So, nag-investigate na naman sila. Ang ginawa nila sa four-way, yung spending variance, hinati nila into variable overhead spending sa fixed overhead spending. Pero, nandyan pa rin ang efficiency, nandyan pa rin ang volume variance. So, kumbaga, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, hindi independent computation yung mga waste na yan. Actually, they are interrelated. Ang four-way nang galing sa three-way, ang three-way nang galing sa two-way. So, these computations are interrelated to one another. At yung pangalan na two-way, three-way, four-way describes 
how many variants ang mabubuo by using this type of way of analyzing overhead variances. Sa two-way, ilang variants ang nakukumpute natin? Dalawa. Sa three-way, tatlo. Sa four-way, apat. Pero ang bottom line ng discussion natin, pin, kumbaga, nabuo yung bawat way na yan to investigate variances as detailed as possible. Okay, so again, huwag kang matakot sa overhead variance. Mamaya, papatunayan ko sa'yo na yung mga computation na yan are truly interrelated to one another. They are not independent computation. Okay, so ngayon sir, paano kinocompute ang two-way? Paano kinocompute ang three-way? Paano kinocompute ang four-way? Okay, let us start with your two-way analysis. Diba ang two-way analysis is your convo analysis? So, mabubuo natin variance dito would be the controllable and the volume variance. To compute your controllable variance, ang starting point natin is your actual overhead. Take note, sa actual overhead, baka hindi kasi siya, kasi may mga problem solving na binibigay yan eh, actual overhead. Pero may mga problem solving na kukumpitin mo and the computation is actual hours times actual rate. Kung baga actual overhead is the actual cost. And take note, pag actual overhead ang kinukumpute mo, magkasama ang variable sa ka-fix overhead. Kaya nga pagdating sa rate na gagamitin mo, combined rate ang gagamitin mo dyan. Magkasama yung fix sa ka-variable. Next item would be the BASH. BASH is known as budgeted allowed for, budget allowed for standard R's. Kaya siya tinawag na BASH. Budget allowed for standard R's. At kung titignan mo sa BASH, pinaghiwalay natin ang fix sa ka-variable overhead. Pero ang gagamitin natin, kaya nga siya tinawag na budget, kasi ang gagamitin mong fix overhead is budgeted fix overhead. And usually sa problem solving, Given na din yan, pero kung sakaling hindi man given, your budgeted overhead is computed as normal capacity times standard rate. Normal capacity is known as your normal activity level, which is stated dapat in hours. Okay, next. Variable overhead is computed as standard hours times standard variable overhead rate. Kaya siya tinawag na BASH kasi yung budget na salita, tinutukoy nun yung budgeted fixed overhead. Yung standard hours na salita, ang tinutukoy nun yung standard hours na gagamitin mo to compute the amount na ilalagay mo for variable overhead. Okay, then the last item, the last line item is standard overhead. So, standard overhead is standard hours times standard rate. Take note, yung computation ng standard hours dito, kapareho ng computation doon sa labor. Di ba kung naalala mo sa labor template, to compute standard hours, that is actual production times standard hours per unit. So, ganun din ang computation for overhead variances. Pero ang gusto kong i-point out, yung standard rate na gagamitin mo is again the combined standard rate for fixed and variable overhead. So, kung titignan mo, Actually, ang one-way analysis is the difference between the actual overhead, yung nasa tuktok, saka yung nasa baba na standard overhead. That is your total variance or total overhead variance. E nung gagawin natin, syempre, unsatisfied ang management sa total variance lang. Kaya ang gagawin natin, paghihiwalay natin yung variance. Di ba? Pag naghihiwalay tayo ng variance, anong ginagawa natin sa template? Di ba? Magsusuksok tayo sa gitna. So, ganun yung ginawa natin dito. Nagsuksok tayo, naglagay tayo ng panggitna, and that is your bash. Para mapaghiwalay natin siya into two, which is yung first saka second item would be your controllable variance, and the last item, or the second and the third item, would be your volume variance. Kung baga, two-way analysis shows sinong variance ang kayang kontrolin ng kumpanya, sino ang least controllable variance. Kaya pag tinanong ka sa theory question, sino ang uncontrollable or least controllable variance, the answer should be volume variance. Huwag ka nang mag-isip. Okay? Kasi yun ang pinapakita ng two-way analysis. Okay, next. Punta tayo ngayon ng three-way. Anong meron sa three-way? Diba sa kwento ko kanina, sa three-way, pinaghiwalay natin yung controllable into spending and efficiency. Kaya pagtingin mo sa three-way analysis, okay, nandyan pa rin yung actual overhead sa kabash. Pero, nandyan pa rin yung standard overhead, pero ang kaibahan sa three-way analysis, maglalagay na naman tayo ng panggitna. Remember, 
yung difference ng actual overhead sa kabash kanina sa two-way analysis is your controllable variance. Diba ang ginagawa natin sa three-way, hinahati natin yung controllable into spending and efficiency. So, para hatiin mo yon maglagay ka ulit ng panggit na. At ang panggit na natin would be your BAA. Okay, BAA is budget allowed for actual hours. Kung titignan mo, ang computation ng BAA sa kabash are almost the same. Anong pinagkaiba lang nila, sir? Yung actual R sa ka-standard R's. Kaya nga tinawag na ba, ayan eh. Yung salitang budget pertains to budgeted fixed overhead, which is the same as BASH. Sa BASH, yung budget pertains to budgeted fixed overhead. Pero sa BASH, ang ginagamit natin para maglagay ng amount for variable overhead is standard R's. Sa BAA, ang ginagamit natin to to put an amount on your variable overhead side would be the actual hours. Kaya hindi siya mahirap tandaan eh. Baa, actual hours ang gagamitin. Bash ang gagamitin, standard hours. Okay, kaya naman. The difference between the first and the second item is your spending variance. And then the second and the third item would be your efficiency variance. And the last item, naku natakpan na, pero madali na naman yan, kapareho lang din naman ng kanina yan, that is your volume variance. So nakikita yung gusto kong i-point out dito, pansinin mo, is three-way analysis an independent computation? The answer is no, it is not an independent computation, it is a computation related to two-way analysis. Kasi most of the items here came from the two-way analysis, ang ginawa natin, naglagay lang tayo ng panggit na. At yung panggit na natin resulted to the subdivision of controllable variance into spending and efficiency. Madali, madali ang overhead, huwag kang kabahan. Napakadali ng overhead variances. Maniwala ka sa akin. Para sa akin nga, mas madali ang overhead kaysa direct material sa direct labor. You just need to understand the relationship from one way to another way. Okay, last way na tayo. Actually, iniisip ng iba yung last way kakaiba. Pero mamaya, papatunayan ko sa inyo na interrelated lang din yan. Paano, sir, kakaiba yung four-way? Sa four-way analysis, paghihiwalayin natin ang computation ng variable overhead sa ka-fix overhead. Ang computation ng variable overhead variances, kasi kung papansinin mo, ah, kanina sa two-way sa ka-three-way, yes, magkahiwalay o pinaghihiwalay natin yung fix sa ka-variable overhead, pero sa panggit na lang. Pero, sa, unlike sa four-way analysis, talagang totally magkaiba ang computation ng variable sa ka-fix overhead. Sa variable overhead, ang computation, kung papansinin mo, parang familiar sa akin yan, sir. A, actual hours times actual rate. Actual hours times standard rate. Standard hours times standard rate. It is quite familiar to you. Tama? That is the template for your direct labor. Tama yan ang template natin sa direct, sa direct labor. Yun nga lang, syempre, common sense naman to. Ang gagamitin mong rate dyan, hindi labor rate. Ang gagamitin mo, variable overhead rate. Pero pagdating sa hours, kung ano yung hours ng labor, ganun din yung hours na gagamitin mo for variable overhead. I'll repeat, ang magkaiba lang sila, yung rate na gagamitin. This one, ang gagamitin mo, variable overhead rate. Kung nasa labor template ka, common sense ang gagamitin mo, labor rate. So, the difference between the first and the second line item is your spending variance. And the second and third item would be your efficiency variance. Punta naman tayo sa fixed overhead. Ang template natin for fixed overhead is ABA. Saan galing yung ABA, sir? Actual, budgeted, saka applied. Paano kinukompute yung actual overhead? That is actual hours times actual rate. Budgeted overhead or budgeted fixed overhead, kinumpita natin kayo na sa two-way, saka three-way yan, kung naalala mo, that is normal capacity times standard rate. Pero again, ang gagamitin mo standard rate dito, standard fixed overhead rate. Common sense yun, kasi nasa fixed overhead tayo. Then applied overhead is standard hours times standard rate. So the difference between the first and the second item would be your spending variance. And then the second and third would be your volume variance. Di ba pansinin mo, ano meron sa four-way analysis? Di ba nandyan pa rin ang efficiency sa ka-volume? Just like on the three-way. Ang ginawa lang natin sa four-way, pinaghiwalay natin yung spending variance into variable overhead sa ka-fixed overhead spending variance. Pero kung titinan mo, common sense, napaka-common sense itong topic na to eh. Pareho lang din siya halos ng two-way sa ka-three-way. Pinaghiwalay lang natin. 
Okay? And I, again, I'll repeat, papatunayan ko sa inyo na pareho lang ang computation o interrelated ang bawat way of analyzing overhead variance. Simula tayo sa efficiency variance. Kung naalala mo ang efficiency variance na sa 4-way sa kana sa 3-way. Kung iisipin mo kasi sir, magkaiba ng computation ang 4-way sa 3-way ng ng efficiency variance eh. Sa 4-way analysis, ang efficiency variance nasa variable overhead lang. Ang volume variance nasa fixed overhead lang. At ang computation ng efficiency variance is the difference between actual hours times standard rate, standard hours times standard rate. Sir, ibang-iba po talaga. Sa 3-way, ang computation ng efficiency variance is the difference between ba and bash. Tama ba yun? Balikan natin yung 3-way. Ah. Diba ang computation natin sa 3-way ng efficiency variance is ba and bash. Pero kung isipin mo, pansinin mo, di ba common o pareho sa pag-compute ng BAA sa kabash yung budgeted fixed overhead. Tama ba? Parehong amount yan eh. Walang pinagkaiba yan. Whether BAA o BASH, pareho yung budgeted fixed overhead. So, ang pwede natin gawin, pwede mo siyang i-cancel out. Pag kinancel out mo yung budgeted fixed overhead, pansinin mo anong natitira. Ang matitira na lang is for BAA, ang matitira na lang actual hours times standard rate. Sa BASH, ang matitira na lang standard hours times standard rate. Hindi ba ganyan din ang computation sa 4-way? Eh, no? Actual hours times standard rate, standard hours times standard rate. And again, that is your efficiency variance. Diba? Parang tanga lang. Ang ginawa mo lang, pinahaba mo lang yung computation, pero ganun pa rin naman halos. Ganun din dito. Kung mapapansin mo, ang volume variance po, sir, nasa 4-way, saka nasa 3-way. Sa Naku, sir, magkaibang computation, huwag mo nang ipilit. Sa 4-way, ang computation ng volume variance is the difference between budgeted and applied overhead. Paano kinukupit yung budgeted? That is normal capacity times standard rate. Ang applied is standard hours times standard rate. Sa 3-way, sir, ang computation ng volume, the difference between bash and applied overhead. Sir, ang layo-layo na po talaga niyan. Kung titina mo, huwag, 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 huwag kang pabebe, sir. Pero kung titina mo, ito na naman. Pansinin mo, ah. Yung computation ng standard hours times standard rate, kung mapapansin mo, sabi ko kanina, combined rate ang gagamitin natin. Tama? So, when we say combined rate, pwede nating i-expand yung formula. Pwede gawin nating standard hours times standard variable rate plus standard hours times standard fixed rate. Kung papansinin mo, ang common sa bash sa ka-standard overhead is yung variable is yung standard hours times standard variable overhead rate. 'Di ba? Kabanggit ko lang kayo na meron sa standard overhead din 'yan. So pag kinansel mo 'yon, ano matitira na lang? Ang matitira na lang budgeted fixed overhead sa baba ang matitira na lang standard hours times standard rate. At kung papansinin mo, ganun din ang computation sa four-way analysis, 'di ba? Budgeted overhead times oh uh, the difference between budgeted overhead and standard hours times standard rate that is your volume variance so kung titingnan mo hindi talaga siya independent interrelated siya pinapahaba lang yung pag-analyze sa overhead para mas ma-investigate natin ng ng mas maayos o mas detailed ang overhead variances ngayon ang bigger question sir anong way ang gagamitin ko is it two 3 or 4 way take note my advice is to is for you to use 4 way analysis bakit 4 way sir because 4 way is the most detailed way of analyzing overhead variances kumbaga siya yung pinaka detalyado sa kanilang tatlo o sa kanilang tatlo common sense naman yun kung bakit siya yung gagamitin natin siya kasi yung pinaka detalyado pero depende rin kasi sa given information yan for example ah for example tinanong ka what is the total spending variance pag four way ang ginamit mo at tinanong ka ng total spending variance pag sasamahin mo yung spending ng variable saka spending ng fix so ibig sabihin magdadalawang computation ka eh biglang nakita mo sa problem ang binigay na actual overhead magkasama silang dalawa hindi mo kayang paghiwalayin the mere fact na hindi mo kayang paghiwalayin ang variable sa ka-fix automatic you cannot use four way okay pero pwede mong, pwede mong gamitin yung pinagsamang fix sa ka-variable overhead if you will use 
three-way analysis. Tama yun, no? nakalagay sa three-way analysis, actual overhead, magkasama yung variable sa kapix. Yun yung gusto kong i-point out. Nakadepende rin sa given information yun. Kasi ang spending variance nasa three-way, saka nasa four-way eh. Sa four-way nga lang, pagsasamahin mo yung dalawa. Sa three-way, magkasama na sila. At gagamitin mo ang three-way kung hindi mo kayang paghiwalayin ang fix sa ka-variable overhead. Okay, another one. Paano pag tinanong ka ng controllable variance? Kung naalala mo ay sir, yung controllable variance, pag pinaghiwalay mo, spending sa ka-efficiency yan eh. So, pwede ka pa rin mag way analysis. So, pag nag way ka, pagsasamahin mo yung dalawang spending sa ka-efficiency, controllable variance na yon. Ihihiwalay mo lang yung volume. Pero syempre, kung nakita mo na naman yung actual overhead, magkasama na naman silang dalawa, hindi kayang paghiwalayin, kaysa mag way ka, mag way analysis ka. So, ang bottom line, ang, oh, ang gusto kong i-point out, ang best way, ang my advice, ang, ang, ang aking advice is for you to use four way Unless hindi mo kayang gamitin due to the given information, try to use three way and two way Pero as much as possible, four way analysis tayo kasi that is the most detailed way of analyzing overhead variances. Okay, so let us apply this one. Let us apply your overhead variances to our sample exercise. Bruno produces one product and uses a standard costing system. The direct labor standard indicates that three direct labor hours should be used for every unit produced. The normal production volume is 100,000. So 100,000 is your normal capacity. Pero ingat lang, yung normal capacity mo is stated in units. Remember, for standard costing purposes, sinabi ng problem na ang gagamitin natin is direct labor hours. So, ibig sabihin, yung 100,000, i-convert natin into hours. E, sinabi naman din ng problem, kakabasa lang natin, na bawat isang unit, bawat isang unit, ang standard hours ay 3. So, ibig sabihin, 100,000 times 3, ang normal capacity talaga na gagamitin natin is 300,000 hours, not 100,000 units. But don't get me wrong, 100,000 units is your normal capacity. Nagkataon lang, kailangan natin siya i-convert into hours kasi yun ang nire-require ng standard costing system. The budgeted overhead of the company is 750 for fixed and 1.5 million for variable overhead. So, pareho po yung budgeted. Bruno applies overhead on the basis of direct labor hours. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Kaya, kinonvert natin into hours yung 100,000 units. During the year, so actual information na to, Bruno produced 98,000 units, worked 292,000 direct labor hours, and incurred actual fixed overhead cost of 760 and actual variable overhead cost of 1518400 requirement calculate all the variances under 2 3 and 4 way analysis okay so sige wag na natin pahirapan pa to let us compute so screenshot mo na muna before we proceed to the answering of the sample exercise so kung tapos ka na let us start with two way analysis a four way pala, sorry, two way, tuloy, four way muna tayo, four way Bakit four way tayo sir? Kasi that is the most detailed way of analyzing overhead variances At sa four way analysis, ganun pa rin Paghihiwalayin natin ang computation ng variable sa kanong fix So variable overhead muna tayo Ang computation sir ng variable overhead parang kapareho ng sa labor Which is actual hours times actual rate Pagdating sa actual rate, I'm sorry to say, hindi binigay ng problem. Pero kung papansinin mo, binigay na mismo yung actual amount ng variable overhead. Diba nakalagay sa, I, I think last sentence yun ng sample exercise, nakalagay doon yung actual amount ng overhead is 1518400. So yun na kagad ang gagamitin natin. Kaysa hanapin pa natin yung actual rate. Next is actual hours times standard rate. Sir, saan po nang galing yung 5 pesos na yan? Actually, yung 5 pesos na yan is computed as budgeted overhead divided by budgeted capacity. So, kung titinan natin, I am talking about your normal capacity. 
Take note, if the standard rate for overhead is not given, ganito palagi ang computation. That is budgeted overhead divided by budgeted cost driver or budgeted capacity. And that is your normal capacity. So that is 1.5 million, yan yung binudget natin for variable overhead sa given information, divided by 300,000 hours, yan yung normal capacity natin, which is 100,000 units times 3. Kaya nga, mapapansin mo sa ibang libro, ang tawag sa normal capacity is the denominator level of activity. Kaya tinawag siyang denominator level of activity kasi siya yung ginagamit na denominator in computing the standard rate. Okay, which is 300,000 hours. So, 1.5 million divided by 300,000, that would be 5 pesos. So, 292 times the standard variable rate na 5 pesos, that is 1,460. Therefore, our variable overhead spending variance is 58,400 unfavorable. Okay, last item na tayo would be standard hours times standard rate. Yung standard rate, wala tayong problema, nakumpita natin 5 pesos. Sir, saan nang galing yung standard hours? Siyempre, hindi given sa problem yan. Pero according to our labor template, kaya nating makumpute yan. That is actual production na 98,000 units, kung naalala mo kanina, times ang standard hours per unit, ilang oras ang kinakain sa bawat unit? 3, pe 3, 3 pesos, 3, 3 hours. So, 98 times 3, that would be 294,000. Times 5, that is 1,470. Kaya ang ating efficiency variance is 10,000 favorable. Okay, next. Proceed tayo sa fixed overhead. Sa fixed overhead, ang una natin kailangan actual overhead. Ang actual overhead for fix, ganun din. Kapareho ng variable. Actual hours times actual rate. Nagkataon lang, wala ulit actual rate. Binigay na mismo yung actual amount ng fixed overhead, which is 760,000. Next, budgeted overhead. Ang budgeted overhead natin, binigay na 750,000. Pero, kailangan natin yung 2.50 na yan, kasi yan ang gagamitin natin sa susunod na item which is applied overhead applied overhead is standard hours times standard fixed overhead rate and the standard fixed overhead rate is 2.50 saan ang galing yung 2.50? di ba kapag standard rate ang kinukompute that is budgeted overhead na 750,000 divided by the normal capacity which is 300,000 so 750 divided by 300 dun galing yung 2.50 pero kung totoo siya hindi mo na talaga dapat siya gawin kasi nakabigay na o binigay na yung total budgeted fixed overhead pero we did it for the sake of computing the next line item okay. and by the way kaya na pala natin makompute yung fixed overhead spending which is 10,000 unfavorable and your volume variance is 15,000 unfavorable so this will be our answer for your four-way analysis okay swerte tayo kasi kayang paghiwalayin kasi kapag kayang paghiwalayin ang fix sa variable kaya mo magcompute whether 4 3 sa ka 2 pero unfortunately kung sa problem magkasama ang fix sa variable at hindi mo kayang paghiwalayin hindi pwedeng dumaan sa four-way yan either two-way or three-way lang ang pwede mong gamitin okay so let us finish this one let us answer your three-way analysis Sa three-way, ang ating unang line item is actual overhead. And take note, sabi ko nga kanina, pag sinabing actual overhead, magkasama ang variable sa ka fix. Diba ito yung actual fix, yung 760, tapos yung 1518, yan yung actual variable. So pag pinagsama, 2278400. Next is BAA. BAA is budgeted allowance or budgeted allowed at actual hours. Ang, ang tinutukoy na budgeted allowed would be your budgeted fixed overhead. And I think given na yon ng 750,000. Tapos actual hours ang gagamitin natin and we will multiply it to your standard variable rate which is 5. So 292 times 5 that is 1,460. At kung papansin mo yung 1,460 yan, yan din yung 1,460 sa kabila sa 4-way analysis. So, pag pinagsama yan, that is 2,210,000. Therefore, your spending variance is 68,400. Pansinin mo, di ba sa 3-way analysis, yung salitang spending variance, magkasama ang variable spending sa ka-fixed spending. Pansinin mo, pag samahin mo 
sa four way analysis pag samahin natin yung variable spending sa capex di ba that is 58400 plus 10000 unfavorable di ba yun din yun no this is 68400 di ba so sabi ko nga hindi kumbaga lahat dapat ng amounts nagbabangga hindi pwedeng hindi okay next bash so yung budgeted fixed overhead constant yan 750 then the amount that you will <coughs> you will write for or you will put on variable overhead will be based on standard R's and our standard R's is 294 times standard rate na 5 that is 1470 so our efficiency variance is 10,000 favorable ito yung pinupoint out ko kanina di ba yung 750 constant pag kinansil mo yung 750 di ba 1460 minus 1470 na lang ang matitira hindi ba yan din yung ginamit mo kanina sa 4-way ito yun no 1460 minus 1470 diba kung baga parang, eh, parang timang lang eh. ganun din naman ang ginagawa natin eh. pinapahirapan lang natin ang sarili natin for the sake of investigating variances further okay last standard overhead sa standard overhead standard R times standard rate yan pero ang gagamitin nating standard rate yung magkasama yung variable sa kafix diba ang standard variable overhead is 5 at kanina sa 4-way analysis, ang standard fixed rate is 2.5. So, pag pinagsama yan, that is 7.50. So, 294 times 7.50, that is 2205. So, our volume variance is 15,000 unfavorable. And yung 15,000, kapareho lang din nung sa 4-way analysis. Diba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, hindi mahirap ang overhead. Madali actually ang overhead variances. Siguro ang dilemma mo lang sa overhead variances kapag siya ay nakaparagraph form. Kailangan magaling kang mag-identify which is which. Sino yung actual amount, sino yung standard amount, and etc. Okay, last na. Two-way analysis. Sa two-way analysis, parang wala na, no, totally no-brainer na to. Kasi yung actual overhead, yan din yung kanina sa three-way. Yung bash, yan din kanina yon And then, yung controllable variance natin is the difference between actual and bash that is 58,400 and diba sabi nga natin lahat ng variance controllable except for volume which is 15,000 kaya sa 4-way analysis try mo pagsamahin mo yung tatlong variance except volume ang total nun is 58,400 okay so this will conclude our discussion on overhead variances so stay tuned on our last part Actually, yung yung our our last video lecture on standard costing would be purely theoretical. Pag-usapan natin yung remaining topics natin for standard costing and variance analysis. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. God bless you all.